it gives me tremendous amount of hope. And I love seeing my buddy having fun <laughs> right on the on the campaign trail and just watching uh, people all across the country uh, learn more about Tim Walls. He's the real deal and just how great he is. And welcome back. You're listening to Hysteria, the podcast for Midwestern princesses. Our guest today is the Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota and a member of the White Earth Band of Ojibwe. She's used to breaking records. She's currently the highest ranking Native American woman elected to executive office. If Governor Tim Walls wins the vice presidency, she will be the first Native woman to serve as a state governor. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, so I grew up like an hour and a half from the Twin Cities. So this is, you are representing my neck of the woods, although I was in Wisconsin. Can you introduce yourself to listeners who might not be lucky enough to live in the land of 10,000 lakes? And tell us a little bit about your background and how you found yourself as the LG of Minnesota. Sure, well, I will tell you, it was not um, my dream as a little girl to become uh, the Lieutenant Governor. Um, I wanted to be a, a ballerina nurse, which is exactly uh, what it sounds like. Um, but I grew up in the community of St. Louis Park, uh, where I still live with my family. Um, and uh, I, you know, grew up around a lot of strong women uh, who uh, just kind of led the way. I didn't know that it was um, uh, maybe some people had a hard time with women being in politics. My grandma was very uh, involved when it was at the time, maybe not like fashionable for uh, for women to be in politics. Um, but uh, just had all of these examples of, of strong women, uh, badass women leading the way in my family. But it wasn't until I worked for uh, the late, great Senator Paul Wellstone that I knew uh, that I needed to be engaged and involved in electoral politics and organizing. And to be really candid, at the time, like I didn't think that ever meant run for office. I just thought we need more uh young people, more Native people to be involved uh, in campaigns and elections to, um, you know, build power around uh, the issues we care about. But it really was, uh, it changed my whole life. I actually wanted to be an early childhood special education teacher. And um, then my senior year at the University of Minnesota, I just stopped at Senator Wellstone's office because I was like, oh, I like Paul Wellstone. I'm just going to go check it out. Um, and that changed everything. So, uh, I'm a, an organizer. I'm a child advocate. I was the uh, former executive director of Children's Defense Fund, uh, Minnesota. I uh, was in the legislature. Um, I am a mom of an 11-year-old uh, amazing young girl and uh, have been the lieutenant governor uh, for uh, the last five and a half years with my partner in justice, uh, Tim Walls. So a lot of organizing, a lot of advocacy has led me to uh, this moment and, and to this role. And uh, now I just get to be the, the hype squad for uh, uh, Tim Walls in his uh, new role as the VP nominee, which is super exciting. Yeah. Well, speaking of the late Senator Wellstone, um, I think that he would be proud of what you and Walls have accomplished and, uh, during your tenure, there's been a huge amount of progressive legislation that has passed in the state of Minnesota codifying abortion rights, free college tuition for low income families, free school breakfast and lunch. So the million dollar question is, how? How did you do it in a state that is it's it's a blue state, but it's like purple ish. So how mm -hmm. did you do it, especially with a divided state legislature? Well, one of the things that we were able to do uh, is just organize over the last 20 years. I think there is, uh, you know, this idea that we uh, had a trifecta right in the, the House, the Senate and the governor's office. And then we did all this good work. It really was uh, just decades of refining these policies, building coalitions with uh, labor, uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, and many of us who were organizers are now in elected office. Uh, you know, a decade ago, I was a new mom with a brand new baby on my hip and one is, was one of the co-founders of Minnesotans for Paid Family and Medical Leave. It took a decade, right, to get that uh, across the finish line and sign it into law, but it was because we kept coming back uh, to those priorities. You know, 10 years ago, we did have uh, another trifecta, and many of us who were advocates and organizers at the time um, saw folks who 
you know, maybe played it safe. And 10 years later, we were like, we got to run as hard and as fast as we can. And Governor Wall says it all the time, right? You build political capital to spend it on behalf of the folks, right, who who need you. Uh, and that's why, you know, free and reduced price, you know, as a kid who grew up on free and reduced price lunch, um, being able to to have universal meals, breakfast and lunch at no cost to, to kids is life changing. Uh, and I think that so many of us um, just were ready for for this moment. And we had some wins along the way uh, before we had the trifecta. But but once um, we got that done, um, we only did what we told people we were going to do. Right. Like protecting access to abortion, paid family and medical leave, expanding access to childcare, all of those things. It wasn't a secret, right? But mm-hmm. we we went for it because that's what we told people we would do. Mm-hmm. And I, I also read that the free school breakfast and lunch program increased attendance yes. at schools. Yeah. That's so exciting. Absolutely. And we saw, you know, what we know is that when kids um, have access to food at school, their attendance goes up, uh, but also, you know, they're able to, to pay attention in class. It's hard to you know study for your math quiz when you have an, an empty belly. So um, we are seeing participation go up. And, and I'll be honest, uh, you know, as a mom who packs a lunch for my kid, now we just send her out the door, right? With hugs and kisses and knows that she's gonna get a good, a good meal at school. And those are the kinds of things I think that it's been so exciting to have the spotlight on Minnesota. We're just, taking care of folks, right? That's yeah. just, that's how we, how we roll around here. Yeah. So what are your current legislative priorities? You've already accomplished so much, like what's next? So I'll be, um, I'll be honest, uh, everything that I've worked uh, my entire uh, career uh, to achieve policy-wise, we did. Right. And we, oh, wow. and we got done. Um, we absolutely will develop a, a new list. But, you know, the guide for us is always to make Minnesota the best state in the country uh, to raise a family. And I think, you know, by protecting uh, our freedoms and making sure, right, that people can decide how and when and if uh, to start a family um, that, you know, People can decide which books they want to read. And as, again, the mom of a sixth grader, I care tremendously uh, about that. And then implementing all of these policies that we just passed, I want to make sure that we have you know, the best paid family and medical leave system in the entire country. Um, it was a priority for Governor Walls, and we need to make sure uh, that folks right, get uh, access to that. And it it happens in a good way. So we'll keep fighting for the things that we believe in. But I also think implementing all of these wins and doing that well uh, is is a top priority for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if the Harris Walls ticket wins in November, you will become the governor and you'll be the first indigenous woman to be an American state governor. How would your identity inform the way you approach the role? Well, I think... um, you know, at, at no time can I stop uh, being an Ojibwe woman. You know, one of my um, mentors, you know, LaDonna Harris said, you know, it's not a hat that I can take on and off. She says, I'm a Comanche woman all the time. And so for me, I'm an Ojibwe woman all the time. I think that has already informed the work that Governor Walls and I have done together in making sure that our, you know, our children have opportunity, that our, you know, elders are supported, and that I think will continue, um, you know, to to guide me. But I would say this, you know, like the governor is still the governor. We have a little over 80 days to make um, to make sure that Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are elected. Uh, I am doing everything that I can uh, to make that a reality. But I'll also say we are in this kind of magic moment uh, that I could have never imagined. As a kid, I had Geraldine Ferraro, right, which was really powerful. But now my daughter has Auntie Deb, who's the Secretary of the Interior, Auntie Charisse, who is in Congress. Her mom's a lieutenant governor. And on election night uh, in 2020, when we watched Vice President Harris uh, walk across that stage in a white suit, my daughter was sitting in my lap and she said, Mommy, she looks like me. Like, this is a reality now. And so, regardless of what happens moving forward, um, we have so much hope and momentum in this moment for so many 
young people across the country who could have never imagined this. Uh, and this is just their reality. So I am hopeful uh, that we will have a government that is more representative of the people, that people can see themselves reflected in. And I frankly think that's just good for democracy. Mm -hmm. So you guided Tim Walls at the beginning of his career when he was a teacher running for Congress. What was it like doing Camp Wellstone with him? So um, he came into Camp Wellstone. I had just won a seat on the Minneapolis uh, Board of Education and was one of the trainers at Camp Wellstone. And he came in and he was wearing jeans and a T-shirt and tennis shoes. And he was like, I'm Tim Walls. I'm a teacher from Mankato and I want to run for Congress in the first congressional district. And we were like, as a Democrat? And he was like, well, yeah. And we're like, OK, uh, come on in. And at the beginning of the training, you know, I really was like, who's this guy? And then by the end of the training, I was like, who is this guy? And I went down to Mankato and I knocked on doors uh, in a district where I didn't live uh, because I believed so much in his leadership. He is, of course, you know, a dad and a teacher and a coach, um, and that came through, uh, that he, I think, one of my favorite things about Tim Walls is that because he is a good teacher, he's also a good learner and a good listener. Uh, And that weekend, you know, I was 25 years old uh, and giving him feedback, right, uh, on messaging and, and, and other things, and he took it, right? And I think like that is one of the things that I have just seen throughout his entire career is that he is so willing to learn from and listen to the people who are most uh, deeply impacted by the decisions that are being made. Uh, and it is, uh, it's powerful. Um, and the other thing that I would just say about Tim Walls is like, what America is seeing right now, this is who he is. Um, you know, my daughter uh, got lice at school uh, the day after, oh, no. yeah, the day I have her permission to tell the story. Um, okay. <laughs> the the day after the 2018 election, right? Oh, so it was no. like, and I literally I called him and I was like in tears and I was like, what do I do? And he said, okay, go to Target and you're gonna FaceTime me. Um, and so he's like, this is the shampoo that you get as soon as you get home. FaceTime me again. I'm gonna walk you through it. Like oh. this is um, who. Uh, he is, and it is what I saw at Camp Wellstone. And I think, I think, um, excuse me, I think the work that we've been able to do together and how he is showing up in this moment, like that is the legacy of Senator Wellstone that um, I see him carrying forward. Uh, and it is, uh, it gives me tremendous amount of hope. And I love seeing my buddy having fun right on the on the campaign trail and just watching uh, people all across the country uh, learn more about Tim Walls. He's the real deal and just how great he is. Yeah. You know, I also think that in this kind of influx of attention to the state of Minnesota, which, again, you know, grew up in the neighboring state of Mm -hmm. Wisconsin, going to the Twin Cities. My siblings are both Golden Gophers. My brother lives in Duluth, like, you know, Minnesota adjacent. Yes. Uh, People the more people find out about the state, you guys are going to get a lot of people moving there. I love it. Well, I think yep. honestly, it is it is one of the low key flies under the radar. One of the best places in the country to live, a hundred percent bar none. You just got to get a heavy jacket. That's, That's right. Hard to agree. Just... You dress for the weather. It's all good. I think Minnesotans we are we are humble people, um, but also uh, I think you know when when the governor talks about you know mind your own damn business. I think like. That's kind of the vibe, right? Like, um, and we're good neighbors, right? We'll like shovel your driveway. We'll bring you a hot dish when you, uh, you know, move into the neighborhood. And, you know, we'll make sure that you can have access to abortion here if you need one, because we're good neighbors, right? Like that's who we are as Minnesotans. Yeah, you know, I have a really funny Minnesota story before our final question, which is about the state fair. Um, So we did a show, a love it or leave it show back in like 2018 in Minnesota, and that was during that April snowstorm. Do you remember that really, Mm -hmm. really out of nowhere? Our plane landed right as it was picking up. The the mayors of both cities were like, don't travel. But the venue, we were there, and it was like, we can't cancel this because, you know, whatever. And uh, so we thought we were just going to have a small show. And before the show, we look out into the audience, and it was full. 
People had snowshoed to the venue on a blizzard during a blizzard when the mayors of both cities were like, stay home. They were like, oh, no, I don't think so. I got a, you know, tickets to the show. I'm going to go blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it was it was so funny. And they were so excited. And like it was a great show. And it was just like people were cross country skiing. And it was For sure crazy. You okay. just got to give yourself enough time to get there. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the State Fair is one of the greatest things that Minnesota offers, like, the world. I 100%. Think. Um, what new foods are you going to try this year at the State Fair? Ooh, so um, first of all, I love the Minnesota State Fair more than anything else in the entire world. It is my favorite thing, and I will be there day after day after day. Um, so there are uh, some new wild rice meatballs that I will uh, be trying. Very excited uh, about that. You know, and of course the the classics, I will just put this on because the governor has one as well. Um, I am team uh, Pronto Pop. <laughs> Uh, and he is a uh, team corn dog. Um, and this is like, people are like, what do you disagree about? And I was like, Prano pups versus uh, corn dogs. That is like the one place where um, there's a little tension in, in our relationship. But um, the state fair is amazing. And anybody who's like, oh, I don't know, the Iowa state fair is pretty good too. Like, sure. No, but no, the, the Minnesota state fair is, is the best. The best. One. Fight me. Yeah. Like, I'm, it is I'm all in. Yep. I'm excited. I, I can't go this year. I just had a baby in June, so I'm not Congratulations. Traveling. Thank you. This is my first day back from maternity leave, oh my actually. Gosh. So, yeah. And I luckily live in a paid family leave state. Hooray. So, you know, I know. <laughs> um, so the, the one that I was reading about and like, I want to eat this and I'm so sad I can't is the like Swedish meatball sliders. Yeah. 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 So, so um, good. I will absolutely uh, try that for you. Please and give I will us feedback. Report Let us back. know. Yep. I'm happy. For sure. Happy. I volunteers tribute. I'm happy. To okay. Do that. Yep. Please. And then also, I think there was like a corn soda. You got to try all of it. And, I will. And please I will take one for the team and try okay. the corn soda. It's not at the top of my list, but like I'm a I am a team player. That's what seconds <laughs> in command are all about. So I will try that uh, <laughs> corn soda for you. Oh, okay. Well, Lieutenant Governor Flanagan, thank you so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, Sandy Petty, do you have anything that you want to add to Sandy Petty this week, Alyssa? I'm feeling uh, Sandy. Okay. I'm not giving into Petty vibes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you will appreciate this as someone who has a baby and probably doesn't sleep that much. <laughs> You're right. I don't sleep that much. I know. And as a uh, perimenopausal woman whose estrogen's gone off a cliff and I don't sleep that much... Julia Child episodes can be found on the PBS app. Amazing. They are perfect. Because you know what was great about Julia Child? Everyone now is like so perfect. I mean, other than Ina, Ina's kind of like more of the real, like chef, like a real cook who makes you feel like you're not a loser if you fuck something up. But Julia Child's just out there like dropping wisdom in these episodes. Like, listen, here's what's wrong with Americans, okay? You, you're, you're afraid to make mistakes. This is how you're going to learn to cook. And I was like, girl, just, I put my headphones on. I was like, Julia, just, I didn't even need to watch it. I was just like listening to her. I'm like, Julia, just talk to me. And then she prompted me to go down the rabbit hole. When you start watching Julia Child on Instagram and then take it to the PBS app, you start getting new things in your algorithm, mm -hmm. which include things from, I had to write her down, past time cook who found her great grandmother's recipes and her grandmother's recipes and is going through the handwritten note cards and making these recipes. Oh, Aaron, I will, I will tag you. I think I actually, I sent it to you last night. Check your DMs. Okay. I sent it to you because okay. it is because first we love old timey weird things. And some of these episodes are super old timey and weird, but she brings like history, like how recipes using condensed milk became a thing because when refrigeration happened, you didn't need condensed milk anymore because you could have a refrigerator. So she's just like, it's just, it's highly enjoyable. 10 out of 10 recommend. Erin, people are not dragging me back into the dark place. I am staying upbeat, head above water, mm -hmm. trying to be chill. We got to, we've got no to. No more trauma, no more trauma TV. Doom I can't gloom. watch things that are called comedies that are just not comedies. Yeah, doom and gloom is so 2020. Um, and I feel like there's been a, yeah, the, the vibe shift has happened and the vibe shift is you know what? joy. I think joy is Donald Trump's kryptonite. He can't be around it. He can't. It, he it, can't. It, wow. 
Wow. Right? It's his kryptonite. It's making him crumble into a million pieces. I'm not saying he's done now, but it's not. He's he does not like it. Authentic joy that doesn't come from hurting another person. That is uh, do you do you think there's ever been joy in the Trump family? Like in a real way? Mm. They didn't even look joyful at his convention. I think when Ivanka got her new chin and it turned out really good. uh, There might have been some joy. That's she might have felt joy. She's got a I good, feel like maybe she and Jared have felt joy. The rest of them are just I don't know. Yeah. Well, they feel joy, but you can never tell if they're happy or not because their faces can't move. Wait, what about you? First first Sandy Petty back. Okay, this is a little bit late to the party, but I have to say, um, taking care of a little tiny baby, who is it? She's a good baby. She smiles yeah. a lot. She's like much less complicated than the first one, and maybe I'm just better at taking care of the baby now because I've done it before. Like you're less scared. Yeah, I'm less scared. But she she is in a phase right now where she doesn't like it when I'm not within, like, when, when she can't see me. So um, she spends a lot of time in her little bouncer, just her little baby Bjorn just being, like, gently bounced, and she goes to sleep like that and whatever. So I spend a lot of time sitting in front of the TV because I can't go anywhere. Right. And I started watching... <laughs> Love Island USA, <laughs> the Shut latest up. season of it. There's so much content. There's like, I'm on like episode 25 or something. And there's, st- I don't know how many are left because I'm just like really enjoying it. It is pure, like, like absolute apex of trash TV. It is so good because everyone on it is very stupid in different ways. But also you find yourself just loving them and rooting for them. Um, And like then you find yourself the more you get to know them, the more you're like, I was being judgmental by thinking this person was stupid. And they were just like they're just being taped all the time. And everybody says stupid things when they're being taped all the time. Yeah, I love it. I love that. Like um, they they will have all day long. They're walking around with their butts out and under boobs out in bikinis. Everybody is like live your best life. Everybody's and they're beautiful. They all look so good. So good for them. That doesn't bother me at all. But what I think is fun funny is in the nighttime they'll sometimes get like these alerts that are like we're gonna have a disco dance party tonight and it'll cut to the people reacting to it and the guys being like oh I bet the girls are gonna look really hot it's like they're half naked all the time (laughs) they're already hot they're gonna be putting on like a dress but they're gonna be more covered up tonight than they they were at the pool most of the time (laughs) Which is like anyway, it's it's really funny. And um, there was one there's one part where a guy says that his uh, career goal is to become like a spokesman for Cheez Its, and it's it's live so those big funny. dreams, and, manifest that for yourself. And there's one there's one conversation where this like very uh, this guy is a hot idiot. There's a hot idiot who is is having it, a girl is pouring her heart out to him, and she goes, "What are you thinking?" And he goes about eels. And he wanted to know how they reproduct instead of reproduce. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's so oh. good, Alyssa. It's so good. I might have to watch it. It's which so You're going to have to tell me what season you're on because I need to be on the same one. The I most can't. recent season. It is so good. It starts out and you're like, okay, fine, whatever. This is like fun, candy colored, fun. But then by the time it gets into the 20s and like the show's producers start getting sadistic, it's yeah. like incredible television. <laughs> There's sisterhood there's guys being bastards and getting the riot act read to them there's one episode where this guy gets caught doing something that he should not be doing and everyone is mad at him and you are authentically watching a guy find out after fucking around like it is so satisfying Whoa. Okay. Uh, Caroline is like I'm enthusiastic in. over there. She's like lifting the mic this up. This is like her cup a, of tea. Like she's about to say something. It is, it is, it is trash. It is absolute trash. Whatever. Heteronormativity. But you know what? It is, there's no, you know, body We're diversity. We're taking but trash over bad vibes any day of the week. There is a cast member on there named Janae who is just amazing like she is gorgeous and like everything about her like she says the funniest things on purpose she's really smart she's she's just the best so yeah you gotta watch it it's i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it fun